Hello everyone. Welcome to our another series of synchronous session. And this time I'm going to discuss the soil profile. And we all know in our previous topic that soil is the product of weathering of rocks. And the soil profile development occurs in long period of time and it depends on several factors. In this illustration, it shows the relationship of the soil to the vegetation in a specific area. With a well-developed soil profile, we could produce a good vegetation. In agriculturist viewpoint, we develop small, uh, I mean, develop a soil means more um, nutrients available for plants and more or high crop yields. Again, to reiterate, a well-developed soil means more nutrients available for the plants and more or high crop yields will be produced by farmers if we have that good soil development. In this slide, it shows the product of weathering of rocks are the minerals such as the feldspar, the calcite, and the olivine. So the residual products due to hydrolysis of the feldspar are clay minerals and the material in solution is the silica. On the dissolution of uh, calcite or which we call a calcite mineral, there will be no residuals but calcium and bicarbonate are present in the solution. And lastly, in the oxidation of the olivine, it will produce a residual product that includes the limonite and the hematite. And the material present in the solution is, or are, I mean, silica and magnesium ion. In this slide, it shows the Bowen's reaction series and weathering. And we can observe here that these different silicate materials are formed based on the environmental condition and their susceptibility to chemical weathering. So let us focus first our attention on the environment of formation. In higher temperature to lower temperature, we can observe that the first to crystallize is the olivine, followed by the peroxine, okay, and the amphibole and the biotite. As the, the temperature going to lower portion of this slide of this illustration, it will produce these several silicate materials. And on this side here, the, subs the susceptibility to chemical weathering, we can observe also the least resistant to most resistant. So the least resistant to chemical weathering is the olivine. And the most resistant is the quartz. Thus, we can say that in determining the soil profile, it is also important for us to know the, the past climate of such area. As to the definition of the soil, it is the combination of mineral and organic matter water, and air. It is actually the portion of the regolith. When we say the regolith, it is the weathered rock and minerals that supports the growth of the plants. And this chart here, the pie chart here, shows or summarizes the components in the topsoil that support the, the plant growth. As what we can observe, the topsoil is composed of mainly of 45% mineral matter 
and 5% of organic matter. And a the same percentage of air and water present in the topsoil. And again, these components of the topsoil supports the plant growth. In this slide here, the illustration shows the different factors related to bedrock composition. When we say bedrock, it is simply tells us that it is the parent material. First, let us focus our attention here. So the weathering, uh, which is resistant sandstone, mostly quartz that yields little soil. And in this portion here, the weathering of the limestone, which specifically chemical weathering via dissolution, the limestone produce these materials in the soil. And here in this portion, the soil that is press, uh, that is uh, rich in iron, Okay, that turns into um, a red color because of the presence of the iron. And this is due to chemical weathering by oxidation. In this portion here, the chemical weathering by hydrolysis, and this usually... This area here is the chemical weathering of the feldspar rich in granite. And remember that uh, climate is also very important in determining the parent material and at the same time, the soil development of that particular area. In this slide also provides the information on the variation in soil development due to its topography. When we say topography, this includes the slope and the time. So let us focus our attention in this area. So the residual soil is developed on this, this bedrock here, and there is no soil development in this portion because of a very steep slope. Why? Because it is always exposed to different factors, exposed to water, to wind. That is why there is no soil development that occur in this area. In this area, there is a thinner soil on slope because of the erosion, because it is um, observed that it is exposed to wind and water. Thus, we can say that it is thinner soil here because of the slope area. And it is usually um, exposed to erosion due to exposure to water and wind. In this area here, the transported soil here is developed on unconsolidated deposits from higher areas of this land. Another here, the unconsolidated deposits are present in this area. So we can say now that in higher areas, usually there is um, low uh, development of soil because um, they are exposed to different conditions that uh, might affect their development. While in this portion, in low-lying area, he areas here, we can observe that there is a um, development of the soil profile in a series of time. In this slide, it shows us the, the factor uh, related to climbing. So observe 
that these areas here are, dif are usually different in climatic conditions and different in the temperature. So observe there is a high, high uh, or increasing depth of weathering in this portion which includes in the forest particularly present in the equator while in low latitude deserts and semi deserts there is a low um, pre precipitation and low um, temperature thus the weathering of uh, the bed rock or the parent material is low okay so when we compare this portion here in the arctic and in the low latitude deserts and semi deserts there is a low or yeah low um, depth of weathering of the parent material or the bedrock because of the low temperature and uh, the low precipitation it receives while we compare it to the equator the condition in the equator is very good uh, because it receives uh, a lot of precipitation a good temperature and evaporation thus there is an increasing observe that there is an increasing depth of weathering of the bedrock or the parent materials and giving it a good nutrition for the plants to grow. Unlike to this portion here, there is no vegetation, okay, compared to the area of the rainforest, which is located in the equator. Now let's talk about the soil profile. The soil profile, wherein the soil forming process usually operate from the surface downward as water descends. Again, remember that water is very important in this concept. So vertical differences are called the horizons or the zones or layers of the soil, which I presented in my previous as um, asynchronous lecture. To go further, the soil profile are divided in different layers or in different horizons. First, the top one is the O horizon, which is the or it is mainly composed of organic matter. The next layer is the A horizon, wherein organic and mineral matters and are present. Because of that, high biological activities, particularly the microorganisms activity, like um, bacteria and fungi and some other larger animals that live or thrive in that area. And together, the, the O and the A horizons make up the topsoil. Okay? And the biological activity is high in the A horizon. Next, we have the E horizon. In the E horizon, there is a little organic matter present there. And it is said in my previous lecture that it is a zone of leaching wherein the soluble materials are removed. Next here, we have the, the, the B horizon, wherein it is a zone of pre-precipitation. -precip -pre and lastly, we have the Z C horizon, partly altered parent materials. And in the next slide, we'll be able to, to observe different layers completely okay from the topsoil and the subsoil so this portion here from the topsoil to subsoil this is called as the true soil or the solemn and the topsoil is composed of O horizon which is loose and partly decayed organic matter matters are present and then the A horizon where the mineral matter mixed with some humus, which makes it more uh, biological activity are occurring. Next here, the, the E horizon, which is the zone of elugiation and leaching. 
The subsoil is composed of the B horizon, which is the accumulation of clay transported from the above portion of the soil. Lastly, we have the C horizon, which is partially altered parent material. And lastly, the parent material, which is the unweathered portion of the soil. So this is actually the idealized soil profile. And it is very easy for us to, to remember the layers of the soil by using this mnemonics. O, A, E, B, C. This is only active educators become champions. See, it's easier for us to, to identify and to organize the layers of the soil or the horizons of our soil profile. In actual setup, in actual picture, we can observe here the different horizons, the O, the A, the E, the D, and the C. Usually this one, the C is more harder compared to, this por uh, to these portions. Also, you can observe in the A wherein um, there is an increase of animal activity here, like um, um, small animals that burrows in the soil. There are also microorganisms like bacteria and fungi that thrive in this area. That is why there is high in biological activity in the A horizon. As what I've mentioned earlier, the animal activities in A horizons like worms, worms ingest mineral grains because they are covered with living organisms, their food. So their, their burrows, not their feeding, increase chemical weathering by exposing the minerals of water and air. And also it helps aerate the soil. That is why these earthworms are very important in agriculture. In this slide, it shows the E and the B horizon, wherein there is a, an alluviation, an alluviation of the area. When we say alluviation, water percolates down the soil column and transporting organic material, insoluble inorganic material. It is why it is said to be in these areas here, in these, uh, yeah, in these, these horizons here, it is an area of alluviation and bleaching. Alluviation, on the other hand, the materials are transported from upper soil horizons are deposited. So in this E and B here, you can observe in the picture that soil particles surrounded by alluviated ions and other materials are present. Okay? In actual picture, the horizon E and the B horizon is present here. Wherein, leaching and precipitation of iron occurs. Next, we have the soil types. Soil types, these are the characteristics of each soil type primarily depend on the prevailing climatic conditions. So that means climate is still important in the soil development. There are three very generic soil types. We have the pedal fir, we have the, the, the pedocal, and the laterite. So in actual picture here, in the evergreen forest, we can observe the pedal fir. We, in the short grass area, we have the pedocal. And in the tropics, in the tropical region, we have the laterite. So these are the um, actual pictures of the different types of the soil, the general type of the soil. First, we have the pedal fur. The accumulation of iron oxides and uh, aluminum rich clays with the B horizon 
and usually it turns color brown in the D horizon. And the pedal fir is the best developed under temperate forest landscapes. Next is the pedocal. Usually it has a white calcium carbonate, the calici, in the B horizon. And usually it associated with dry grasslands and brush vegetation. Now here we can observe the actual picture of the, the different horizons of the soil where we can observe the pedocal with the calici and the B horizon. That means there is an accumulation of uh, calcium in this area or the calcium carbonate rather. Lastly, we have the laterite. Usually in hot and wet tropical climates, present the uh, present uh, the laterite soil profile. And usually in the monsoonal climate, so there is an intense chemical weathering in this area because it is in the tropics. And the red iron oxide, which is uh, we can observe in this picture, present in the topsoil, which is not distinct and uh, from the B horizon. So the bacterium responsible for dissolving the soil iron is not present here. Thus, there is a color of uh, red because of the presence of the iron oxide. So deep soil, but uh, usable nutrients are shallow. Another picture showing the laterite in the Sarawak Borneo. So the percolating rainwater causes the dissolution of the primary rock minerals and decrease of easily soluble elements as the sodium, the potassium, the calcium, the magnesium, and the silicon. So this gives rise to a residual concentration of more insoluble elements, predominantly iron and the aluminum. So this is the actual picture of a laterite soil. And what happens in the earth surface? So there are several uh, processes that uh, contribute in the soil development. One is the erosion. The erosion is the physical removal of material by mobile agents, for example, the water, the wind, the ice, or the gravity. Here in the tropics, usually the primary um, reason of soil erosion is water. And the natural rates of soil erosion depends on these, um, these um, factors. Number one, we have the soil characteristic, the climate. Number two, the three is the slope and the type of vegetation. As to the soil erosion, in many regions, the rate of soil erosion is significantly greater than the rate of soil formation. So that is why farmers level fields to slow loss of the topsoil. That's why they, they are usually using contour farming. And farmers have been building terrace, terraces for thousands of years. One example of uh, these terraces is the Banawi rice terraces in the, in the Luzon. And usually this is very famous. And also, it is also present the rice terraces in in uh, in Antique. So this um, approach um, lower the rate of soil erosion in that area. And we all know that the problem it may bring to the farmers if soil erosion occur in that area. It usually lost the topsoil, which is rich in minerals and nutrients needed by the plants. Then the effect will be low crop yield. Again, in this illustration, it shows the, the fertile soil that is extremely valuable for food production. And that is why it shows again the soil that
again, the soil degradation in the map here. And that ends the presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention.